We all know that TypeScript will take over JavaScript someday. It's not about if, it's about when. And because TypeScript have been evolving so much during the last few years that there are a few habits that you have to break to call yourself a good programmer. And I can only promise you one thing, that by the end of this video, you will know so many new cool tips and tricks in TypeScript that will change your code for the better. You'll not only break many bad habits that you have in TypeScript, but you'll also see how to enforce that you become a better TypeScript programmer by the end of this video. Before we get into the habits that you need to break in TypeScript, let me first introduce myself. My name is Pranav and I have been using TypeScript since more than two years now. And I was professionally introduced to TypeScript when I first started using Angular. Before that, I was exposed to Angular 1, which is also known as Angular JS, and was pretty comfortable with JavaScript for a long time. But when for the first time I used TypeScript, I was so much happier. Why? Because I came from a Java background and in Java we have strict types for each and everything. But in JavaScript, we didn't really have that. And although many people are proponents for that, I was not really a fan of it. And that is where my love for TypeScript started. Since then, I always try to keep myself up to date with the new trends and the new features that TypeScript have been releasing since the last few years. Without wasting any time, let's see the first habit that you have to break in TypeScript. The first one is defining default values. As you can see in the example here, you might be using this since a very, very long time, where you have two arguments that are required, but the third one is optional. Now you might be using the pipe pipe symbol, which is also known as or, to basically give a default value to your variables. But there's a better way to do this. And here it is. You don't need to use the interrogation mark and then check if the value is available. And then if it is not available, then you have to define a new value. Well, the example right now is much cleaner and easy to understand. All you need to do is define all the three variables, in this case, text, author, and date, and just pass a default value in the function itself. And another reason to avoid using the old way is that it will fail when you have a falsy value. Another mistake that developers make a lot is use the any type. Now, there might be two reasons why you're using that. Number one, number one, you might just be lazy. Or number two, you just don't know better what to do when you don't know the type of a variable. Well, don't worry about it. TypeScript is here for our rescue. There's another kind of type that you can assign when you don't know what the type of your variable is going to be. And that is known as the unknown type. But let's talk about why unknown is better than any. Well, unknown, as the name suggests, will tell your TypeScript compiler that at this moment in the code, you don't know what type of your variable is it. However, on the other hand, if you use the any operator, you will simply disable all the type checks and you don't really want that. Because you can see here that in the code later, you might know what the type of that variable is depending on the conditions, right? See this example for instance. When you fetch something from an API, you didn't really know the type of your response. But after checking if the API has thrown any errors or there's no unexpected outcomes, you will finally know that it was supposed to be a string array and you can use it as a string array by simply using the as operator. And you can see in the example right here. Let's look at another common mistake that developers make. And to come clean in front of you guys, even I used to make this mistake a couple of weeks ago. So in this example, let's say you are creating an interface called product and you have an ID and a type. Now the type is a string and it can have two values. Let's say digital or physical. There are two more properties defined in this interface, but both of them are optional. And why is that? Weight in kg will only be used if it's an actual physical product. And weight in MB will be used when it's a digital product. And it makes sense. Now, can you guess what's the problem here? I'll give you a couple of seconds. Well, if you could not, let me tell you. When the type is digital, yes, you want size in MB, but there's no stopping you to even use the weight in kg and the same vice versa. When it's a physical product, you should only be using the weight in kg, but who is stopping you from using the size in MB as well? TypeScript compiler will definitely not stop you from doing that. And it's not and really it's not the really TypeScript type fault. fault. It is the it fault, is the fault, fault in, our in our code. Now let's fix it. First of all, you should create an interface with just the ID and the type. And the type obviously can just have two values of a string. Now the next thing you should do is, you should create two more interfaces. One digital product and the other one would be physical product. And both these interfaces should implement the product interface. And now when the type is digital, you have to enforce size in MB. And when the type is physical, you are enforcing weight in kg. Isn't that awesome? These simple concepts of object-oriented programming are so common to be used in other programming languages. These basic object-oriented programming principles are seen so many times in languages like Java. 
However, because JavaScript and TypeScript are still relatively new, and by relatively new, I mean in terms of types and interfaces and oops concepts that people don't really use them properly. And now you know how to define the types in a better way. The next and a quick one is that you should avoid using one letter generics. Let me show you an example. As you can see here, TypeScript allows you to write one letter generics, which are basically the capital letter T. Now, yes, it does look simple and it does save you some time, but in the long run, it's not really the best practice to use. You should give a full descriptive type to each of your variables like this. Now buckle up for the next one as it might look a little complicated. And if you don't understand it in the first go, just rewind the video for a couple of minutes and see that again. So I just showed you a way how you can forcefully give types to your variables using the as property. However, you can go even a step further if you want and use type guards. Now type guards just make sure that all your checks are really explicit. Let's see how it works. Let's say you're supposed to receive an array of strings from an API call. But now when you first receive the response, you don't really know if it's the correct one or not. So initially you'll start by declaring the unknown type. Now using your own created type guards, you can ensure that this is an array of strings using this method. The first thing you should do is you should use the array library of JavaScript to check if the response you actually got is a real array. And you can do that with the help of array.isArray method. This will return you true or false based on checking your array if it's really an array or not. And then the second thing you want to do is you want to check if each element inside the array is a string or not. And this is how you can do that. You can use the dot every property of array and you can then see if each index or each key in your array is actually of the type string or not. This might look a little intimidating, but in the long run, this will only make your type checks even stricter and make your code even less error prone. For the next one, raise your hand if you have been passing the variable directly into an if statement just to see if it's defined or not. Well, I'm certainly guilty of doing that. And if you are as well, we need to break that habit right now. Your condition like this should actually look like this. We should explicitly check the condition that we really care about. And the reason behind that is that yes, it does check if the value of your variable is null or undefined, but this will also check if the value of your variable is zero or false. So essentially in case of numbers and Boolean, this can create a huge problem for you because even though they are defined, they might just fall into the trap and execute something that you don't want them to. And the next one is very similar to this one. And that is you should avoid using the bang bang operator. And the bang bang operator is basically using the exclamatory mark two times to convert your variable into a Boolean. This is not only difficult to understand for new developers, but it can also create problems again when you're using numbers and the value of a variable is zero. And the last one, which in my opinion is more important than anything else is using the strict mode. If you're using TypeScript, the chances are that you must have a TS config file in your code base or your IDE. We will see a great way by simply one line of code, how your IDE and your compiler will force you to use good habits in the future. And if it looks like this, it's a big problem. And again, you need to break that habit. You need to add another parameter called as strict and you need to pass the value of true. And why is that? This will ensure that stricter rules and policies are applied to your TypeScript code base so that no one makes a mistake by not defining types properly. And it will discourage you and throw you some errors if you don't use the TypeScript types properly. And this is really what we want to enforce. Why the hell we want to use TypeScript if you don't even define the types properly, right? You can go back to JavaScript if you don't want to use the strict mode. So thank you for making to the end of this video. I really hope that you learned something new today. Let me know in the comments down below if this video helped you break any bad habit in TypeScript and I'll be glad to see your response. So thanks again. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, the bell icon and until next time.